Well, hello everybody and welcome to this is session 10 of the book club for the cheese trap and we are about done. I'm Gustavo Tolosa, your host and um, your plant-based uh, sh chef and coach and musician and pianist. So today we will be discussing reading chapter nine and maybe 10. And uh, hopefully you will have learned a lot from this um, book club, like I have, I always keep on learning. And um, I want to mention that um, we are getting ready for the new um, the new book that we will start in January. And uh, we're also um, just letting you know that next week is gonna be our last session for this book club. And we'll take a break of a couple of weeks and we'll start again. Um, even though we're not going to be meeting, if we, I'm going to be sending you some, at least a couple of really nice presents. They're going to be, of course, virtual presents that you will receive in the email. So if you haven't um, subscribed to this channel or if you haven't uh, sent me an email telling me that you want to be in my email list, uh, feel free to send me an email at uh, plantemus at well, it's actually info at plantemis.com. Info at plant, that is P-L-A-N-T-E-M-U-S. Um, very good. And let's see. So you're going to be getting, we're going to be meeting one more time next Saturday. Then you will be getting some nice, uh, I think you're going to enjoy these uh, gifts that I will be sending you. And um, a couple of, new videos that I will be announcing later uh, in the, the next few weeks. So I want to mention and show you what the new book is going to be while we wait for people to log in. And um, let's see here. I will put the, hold on, let me put the slide so I can show you what it is going to be. And... This is it, guys. We will be reading uh, a very new book that uh, Chef AJ and Glenn Mercer wrote. And um, you can get the electronic version and you can also get the paperback, both in Amazon and it is called Own Your Health. I think you will really enjoy it. And um, it comes with some really, and I mean really good recipes that you want to have. I, um, I think you will enjoy these very much. So I will put that, let's see here. Um, I will put that back on later. But talking to Glenn this week, uh, I was asking him what he could do for us, for the book club. And um, this is what he sent me. He said that any of you who go to Amazon, that's where it is available. So you do have to go to Amazon.com. You can get the Kindle version or the paperback. Um, sometime this month, you should be able to get the audiobook as well. So once you have purchased the book, if you send him an email at gmercer, that is G-M-E-R-Z-E-R -E -E at AOL.com, He's going to send you some bonuses, okay? So I will type it here, G Mercer at AOL.com. 
that is the email you want to send him an email uh, with a proof of purchase from Amazon and in the subject line put Gustavo I don't get anything I want you to know I have never gotten anything from the sales of any books and this is in the same case I'm not getting any kind of uh, you know, reward or anything. He just wants you to write Gustavo in the subject line so that he will know that you're one of the members of the book club. And then he will send you these things that I'm going to mention, which he uh, doesn't send to everyone. So um, later on, if you watch the replay, you will see this in written here on the screen. So what he what he will send you is a PDF is a file with 25 bonus SOS free um, recipes uh, that are from his wife. And um, you will it says um, own your health has 81 recipes from AJ and 35 from other contributors, including his wife for a total of 116. So he will be sending you that PDF with the extra uh, 25 bonus um, recipes. Then he will send you, this is a private video, it's not available in other places. Um, it's in Vimeo, in Vimeo and is of Chef AJ making her carrot cake. Now, this carrot cake is not in the book and you will want to have this carrot cake because I think it's the best carrot cake I have had and I have tried many. Um, so you will get the video. You will also get the PDF file with the written recipe. Just to get that, it's worth getting the book. Um, and then he says that for any members of the book club who send him the email um, and tell him what their favorite chapter of the book is, he will enter their name in a raffle and we will pick two names out of there and he will send you a um, an autographed copy of his novel, his novel because he is a, a screenwriter, actually. And you will learn more about all that he does later on. And he wrote a, a, a novel called Off the Reservation, which um, is about a vegan congressman from Indiana who runs for president. And has it that this novel has been optioned for a film actually that has been delayed due to the pandemic, but after it's after we're out of this pandemic, uh, it will hopefully get you know filmed. So, and last but not least, I think another exciting thing you'll get in this book club is that I will have him as a guest. I will have a Chef AJ as a guest, and I will have one of the doctors in this book, who is a very prominent doctor that maybe, maybe some of you already, you know, have met him and know him. I'm going to leave it here as a surprise. So we'll have at least three very interesting and fun guests. So uh, I hope that you will go and get this book. Uh, I will put it one more time here. Once more, I'm going to tell you that um, I don't get any kind of commission from book sales. This book club is entirely uh, a love, you know, uh, <laughs> offering for everyone. I don't get anything here. I just do it for you and I do it because I like to continue learning and reading, sometimes rereading the same material that I've read before. So once you get this book on Amazon, you can get the Kindle version, you can get the paperback, you can get the audiobook. Then, um, and you sent uh, Glenn the email, uh, you will get all those benefits, those bonuses. 
Okay, so let's get started today. And uh, let's see, there we go. Please feel free to write in the chat questions, comments. Hello, Judy. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Ruth. It's always nice to see all of you here. And uh, we are in Chapter 9 of The Cheese Trap. So the Chapter 9 says a healthy diet. And I will just jump around a little bit because some of the pages here are about stories and uh, testimonials, and I think those are great. Um, and I also think that that's a good thing for you to read at home. So on page 160, in the printed version, we have what's in, what is in. And so because when you talk about a plant-based diet who some, you know, to someone that is used to eating so much De so, you know, much cheese and butter and milk and eggs and all these type, different types of meat and, and, and fish and oil and et cetera, and, you know, pastries, it's all of that. When you tell them about a plant-based diet, they, they, the first thing that pops in their mind is, that, so, so what, what is left to eat? I don't know how to eat. I know, I know a lot of people that think that they're like, well what do you you know they 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 imagine me being like a rabbit eating some lettuce and and tomatoes maybe if i if i'm lucky and some carrots <laughs> you know so uh what is in what if, what can we actually eat well we have the power plate which was developed by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And the power plate looks like that. So you have fruits, you have grains, legumes, and vegetables. So let's start with the vegetables. Uh, vegetables are loaded with vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, and I love that word, and I love to eat antioxidants. I don't have to take a pill that has isolated components that will try to balance inside my body and pull nutrients from other places to balance. I don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it, because if you eat a diet, a plant-based diet that is varied, that you eat a lot of vegetables and a lot of different kinds of fruits, you will get all these antioxidants in the amounts that nature has already, you know, uh, designed and planned. So there are um, no bad fats here or cholesterol, even worse. Um, so you want to eat all the vegetables, but I especially encourage you like Dr. Barnard here to eat your greens and that's something that there's always in the refrigerator there are there's chard there is if there's no chard there is spinach if it's not spinach there's broccoli brussels sprouts um you know eat um eat your greens because that's what keeps the endothelial covering you know lining of our arteries healthy so that we don't end up with heart disease so broccoli kale spinach brussels sprouts you know all the all the greens eat a lot of them include two or more vegetables in each meal so you can even find creative ways to include some of these in your breakfast. I have, for some reason, I have been um, getting away from uh, sweet uh, stuff for breakfast. I don't, they don't, it doesn't sound good anymore. So I eat mostly a leftover from dinner from the previous night or, or lunch in the previous night, but I want something savory. So you may, you know, and the serving is very small. You know, it's the palm of your hand. It could be a little bit of broccoli. It could be a little bit of 
of a of steamed spinach with some nice um uh, you know like uh, those those vinegars that are flavored some of them are just amazing to 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 taste there are so many kinds so vegetables number two well they're, they're not in any particular number but legumes uh, that includes beans peas and lentils foods that grow in a pod beans are rich in healthful protein you know the question that everybody has when you say that you eat a whole food plant-based diet where do you get your protein well, one little cup of protein has all the protein I need for the day. Um, it has more protein than beef. So, but I don't eat the, uh, you know, uh, the hormones and the cholesterol and the um, parasites and everything else that comes with meat. So protein, calcium also, iron, and of course, our best friend, fiber. We get fiber everywhere from the vegetables, from the legumes. And another group is the whole grains. And the whole grains, you know, vary in different parts of the world. Although the standard American diet, the Western diet is unfortunately, it's, 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 it's uh, spreading all over the world, but in, in recent years, you know, in Asia, um, it was rice. And in Latin America, uh, corn. And in Europe, wheat. And so uh, all those whole grains. Many cultures remove the bran coating from grains, turning brown rice into white rice and brown bread bread into white bread however you're better off with the whole grain grains provide protein also fiber and healthful complex carbs and then we have fruits fruits can be a snack can be a dessert or i mean it could be even a meal uh, blueberries one of my favorite blackberries raspberries are loaded with antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, water, fiber, um, papayas, mangoes, apples, oranges, bananas, pears, and zillions of other varieties are vitamin rich and like all plant foods, free of animal fat and essentially free of cholesterol too. So then he, uh, Dr. Barnard kind of, um, puts you in, uh, in different restaurants here, you can imagine. And he talks about what you can order in an Italian restaurant and still have a good meal. Um, then he takes you to a Mexican restaurant and he gives you examples. And um, just know that all of us in the plant where, you know, world, plant-based world, who in some way or another teach this way of eating, uh, know that eating in a restaurant is 98% of the times, I'm just throwing a number there to give you the idea that most of the time it's not a good idea. There is oil in almost everything. There is sodium in almost everything. So, um, and if not, uh, unless it's a very unusual uh, restaurant uh, that knows how to prepare a clean plant-based meal, um, you will end up with a with a salad. Nothing wrong with eating the salad. It's just uh, it's kind of boring. I mean, when you go out to eat, it's usually a special occasion. You want to be having something different. Um, and so, but when I do and I really try to keep it to an absolute minimum, I'm there with a boring salad when everybody else is eating something that looks, uh, you know, that smells good. Not all the time, I have to admit, uh, or look good. And, um, you know, we're still tempted by the smells around us. I mean, yeah, meat doesn't 
uh, appeal to me anymore. But there are other things, maybe the smell of toasted bread or maybe the smell of, um, I don't know, uh, just different things that in the restaurant may tempt us. So try to avoid the restaurants. Um, they're just most of the time not a clean and safe place to eat. So on page 162 and 163, he says, what's out? And so that was in what we just talked about, what's out? Well, the problem foods are those that dump fat, especially saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, animal proteins, and added oils and sugars on your plate. These foods contribute to gain, um, you know, gaining weight, cholesterol, and blood pressure problems, diabetes, and all manner of other health issues from asthma to migraines. But it is not the only problem food, cheese, talking about cheese. There are also other things like, um, you know, anything that is dairy well, is, is a problem. Eggs, eggs have huge loads of cholesterol in the yolk and they have animal protein in the egg white. You don't need any animal protein at all. You will get more than enough protein from plant-based foods. And like dairy products, eggs have their share of bad fat, have no fiber and no complex car carbohydrate, and tend to skew the diet in an unhealthful direction. So what else is out? Well, meat, poultry, and fish. Meat eaters, uh, I mean, meats are needless to say animal muscles. I don't know if you've ever thought of that that way, but I have. They, you're eating animal muscles. And that means they're perfect for moving a cow's legs or a chicken wing or fish's tail, but they are not so good when it comes to nourishing the human body. Uh, they are mixtures of animal protein and fat along with cholesterol and occasional traces of fecal bacteria, salmonella, E. coli, etc. Just set them aside. What else is out? Added oils. It pays to keep vegetable oils to a minimum. It is certainly true that olive oil is better than cheese or chicken fat as it has much less saturated or bad fat. But there is no need to be adding any bad fat to your diet. Bad fat is bad for the heart and also associated with Alzheimer's risks. Um, so uh, if you recall from chapter two, all fats and oils have nine calories per gram. If there was just one reason to not eat oil is the amount of calories is more than double the calories, the carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, and uh, um, what do we call it? Um, I was going to say uh, complex carbohydrates and, um, well, protein. That's what I wanted to say. Complex carbohydrates and proteins. You know, they have four uh, calories per uh, per gram, and um, fat has nine. So if it was just for the fact that you're doubling the amount of calories, that's enough to set it aside. So if you had to, if you had absolutely had to have oil for some reason in a restaurant somewhere, you know, it's better if it's not used for frying or heated to put on a salad. And if it was, you know, really high quality olive oil, but um, I just find that it's easier to put some lemon juice and maybe some uh, vinegar or something. So, okay. So what was out? Dairy products, eggs, meat, poultry, and fish, and added oils. What else? Sugary processed foods. So the natural sugars, 
found in fruits are healthful and nutritious. They provide glucose that powers your brain, your muscles, and all the rest of you. They are foods we were designed to be eating. But here, we, here is the but. But added sugar, the sweetener in soda, the sugar in cookies, etc., is not health food. In modest quantities, it is not to, you know, it's not worth worrying about. A teaspoon of sugar has only 15 calories, but sweeteners can be added to foods in such quantities that the calories add up. So here on page 165, I want to highlight uh, the next to last paragraph here where he says, even so, it is good not to overstate sugar's downside. Food writers and the media have been eager to blame sugar for all manner of health problems when much of that blame should rightly go to cheese, meat, and other greasy, unhealthy foods. Sugar simple, simply does not have anywhere near the calories that fatty foods have, nor does it have any cholesterol or bad fat. What he's saying here is something that Dr. McDougall also says. Both of these doctors are saying that just plain white, you know, table sugar is not health food. It's not considered health food. And, you know, it, 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 it can cause a lot of problems too. But... All of the pretty much problems that we have today, cancer and heart disease and, um, you know, just everything that we have been talking in this book, uh, anything that with inflammation, um, obesity, all of that is due to the saturated fat in the cheese, in the eggs, in all sorts of meat. That is what is causing the problem. And of course, the industry is very smart to find something else to blame it on, like sugar, which again, is not, we're not saying go and eat sugar, but that is not the main problem. So we need to have that clear in our head that that is a problem, but it's not the main problem. I like something that Chef AJ say, says, um, don't major in minor things. Um, so this is kind of a case here. A lot of people study and talk and that's on sugar. It's all the focus is on what they're, you know, gobbling up cheese and eggs and butter and meat. And that is what is keeping them sick, really. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, what else should we highlight here? Well, we should highlight that um, Dr. Barnard here on page 166 and 167 talks about two main supplements. One is vitamin, vitamin B12 and one is vitamin D. And I think every plant-based doctor, at least everyone that I have talked to and interviewed and that's pretty much everyone <laughs> um, agrees that vitamin B12 is absolutely essential. And you have here um, a kind of a lengthy explanation um, of what it is. It's very important for healthy nerves and healthy blood. And it's a vitamin that is not made by animals or plants. Um, you know, actually vitamin B12, what it is, is bacteria. The body needs only a very tiny amount per day, 2.4 micrograms. So before the modern era where we have, we're obsessed with cleaning, you know, um, the bacteria in the soil would be transferred to the vegetables and then on the fingers of people and then to the mouth. And there they got traces of B12 
and that was needed. But those sources are not reliable today, if they ever were. Meat eaters get traces of B12 produced by bacteria in an animal's intestinal tract. But not only is that not a healthful source, the B12 in meat is not necessarily easy to absorb. So the US government recommends B12 supplements for everyone over the age of 50. He says he recommends it for everyone, period. Um, it is not optional, it is essential. And you can read a little bit more here. I have also done quite a few webinars with Dr. McDougall about B12 and vitamin D, which you can find in my YouTube channel by going to the playlist that is called Dr. McDougall webinars. Um, one thing that Dr. McDougall does not recommend under almost any circumstances is taking vitamin, v, uh, vitamin D. Vitamin D is really a hormone and it's produced or is metabolized by the skin in contact with the sun. 15 minutes is what Dr. Barnard and McDougall recommend. 15 minutes in the sun, in your arms or face and per day, and that's it. He does recommend that if you live in a place where you're inside a lot, because even when it's cloudy, just because it's cloudy, that doesn't mean that you're, you're um, you, you know, the, the infra, whatever it's called, I don't know, red A, you know, rays or whatever that the sun sends us, you know, they do go through the clouds and they do hit your skin. So, um, but if you spend a lot of time inside due to weather, um, being too cold or too hot or whatever, he does recommend taking a small amount but he even says that higher doses can be dangerous and should be used only when directed by a physician. So just taking vitamin D, ultraviolet, thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Um, so don't, uh, you know, be very careful. I, if I don't take it and I don't plan to take it. And remember that there is one source of vitamin D in the plant world, and that is mushrooms. Yes, mushrooms. If you eat mushrooms several times a week, I eat them all, almost every day, and cooked is better, much better. Um, and there are dozens of ways to cook them. Um, you get your vitamin, I mean, D from mushrooms. Um, let's see what else he recommends against, really against taking any other, um, any other, um, supplements. And you can read about that in page six, 168. So how do health food, uh, you know, healthful foods work? Well, let's just, you know, he just numbers there. Weight loss, it helps to lose weight. They, um, they lower your, they help to lower your cholesterol. Uh, they reduce blood pressure. Um, a low fat plant-based diet improves insulin sensitivity, presumably because it helps the body eliminate the fat particles that hinder insulin action. The improvement in blood sugar control can be dramatic, reducing the need for medications and sometimes making the disease disappear altogether. And then a healthful diet helps with arthritis, migraines, respiratory problems, and skin conditions. And we're at the end of the chapter. So then on page 172 and 173, he says, I'll just make it simple and give you two steps. Step one, 
check out the possibilities. Don't change your diet yet if you are new at this. You're not ready, maybe. Instead, take a week or so to see what foods you might like. I suggest you take a piece of paper and write down your four categories, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Then, over the next week, jot down foods that are free of animal products and fit into each category. The idea is to find foods that you like. You will find many ideas in the recipe section of this book. And then step two, do a three-week test drive, he calls it. Once you've found the foods you like, put a healthy diet to a three-week test. For 21 days, have your diet be 100% plant-based, choosing from the foods you already know and you like. Don't set a food wrong. Really do it so you can see how you feel. If you like how you're feeling, stick with it. And that is the end of chapter nine. So um, any comments, any questions that you want to type or ask, uh, feel free uh, to do it here in this live webinar. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you want to write a comment in the, in the comment area, please do so because I actually read those and answer. So um, this was a good chapter to put it all together and to review. And um, we'll just move on to chapter 10. And if you have any questions, I'll be watching here the chat. And chapter 10 says, all the flavor, none of the regrets. So uh, he gives you the name of uh, a person. Miyoko is her name. And Miyoko um, has become very well-known, famous, because of the uh, plant-based um, cheeses that she makes. Um, I tried it once in a conference that I attended, and um, they were amazing. It's just that uh, I don't crave the cheese anymore. So even if you told me that I have this amazing, you know, cheese here, I just, eh, maybe I'll try, but I'm not. But if you really, is that something that you still miss, you might want to check Miyoko's um, website. It's I don't think it is listed here, but if you type her name, Miyoko Shinner, and um, yes, it's not very cheap. Okay, me. Uh, neither are some of the good cheeses if you were used to eating them. Uh, let's see, I'm going to type the name here in case you want to look her up. Let's see if I did it right. Miyoko Shinner. It just doesn't have the apostrophe S. It's just Miyoko Shinner. Um, let's see what you... I am now learning to make my own non-dairy vegan cheese. Yes. Well, you have some recipes here. There are recipes in my Facebook page, which is called Dr. Starch. There are some in my YouTube channel. Um... There are so, actually, we did, we made one here with, with Shada in one of our sessions, and we made one with uh, Catherine Lawrence. There are some cheese sauces and actually hard cheeses that you can make. They are very, very good. Um, okay, so that is something that he mentions here. And um, then he mentions... Another person, uh, Tal Ronan, here. And uh, I'll just let you read that because those are things that are optional for some of you. And then what I like about the rest of this chapter is the ideas that he gives you. For example, on page 183, it says pizza toppings. And you know, 
sometimes we think, wow, what can I put in a pizza? I don't know. Maybe some tomatoes and, um, you know, spinach or something, but or onions. But there are quite a lot of things you can put on a pizza. You can put sautéed or roast, roasted onions. You can put also roasted garlic. You can put mushrooms. Again, that's the, the one of the things that has vitamin D. You can put grilled or roasted veggies, spinach. Um, you can put actually cooked potatoes, olives, uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Well, anyway, just artichoke hearts, pineapple chunks. Um, and then coming out of the oven, you can add fresh basil leaves or chopped chives or balsamic reduction, um, nutritional yeast, or you can try some of the vegan cheeses. So then he goes on to talk about Italian pastas and, of course, being um, descendants of Italians, I think I could eat pasta every day. So, but I do, uh, I am careful because pasta, even though it can be whole, uh, uh, whole grain, I mean, uh, um, yeah, it can be whole with, with, with uh, whole flour. Um, you know, the, the, it's still higher in caloric content. So, yes, pasta is allowed because it absorbs a lot of water while cooking and it has fiber. So it is allowed if you find the, um, the whole wheat pasta and you make sauces um, that are, you know, plant-based and use no oil. And, um, yeah. I could eat pasta and I could eat potatoes every day of the week. And uh, <laughs> that's it. So um, he gives you some ideas of pastas here, and there are quite a few recipes in this book. Then what about salad toppings? Oh, wow. There's so many things you can put on salads to make them not boring. You know, Chef AJ always adds one, one fruit, at least one fruit in a salad, whether it's chopped apples or whether it is little mandarin oranges or blueberries or, or pineapple. She always adds uh, that. It just adds another either crunchiness or creaminess to the salad. You can add olives, that way you won't be adding any salt. And you can add avocado if losing weight is not a, a, you know, a problem or a goal of yours. You can add um, a few nuts or seeds or drop a few raisins or dry cranberries. I find that they do give it this texture that is kind of, um, you know, it gives... It gives the impression that there's fat in it, but of course there is not. Um, oh, adding chickpeas is really, really good to the, to, to the salad. Fresh herbs, pickled foods, uh, and then there are tons and tons of dressings that you can try. There are, again, I have several in, in my... Um, Facebook page. I have, you have several here and you have several already from the previous books that we have read so far. Then he gives you toppings for vegetables. Um, he also gives you sandwich uh, fillings. And uh, of course, one of the things that you can use and I do when I make sandwiches, I don't make them very often, but when I do, I use a very creamy, a homemade hummus that um, I know what it has and I don't add any fat to it, but it's perfect to uh, substitute for um, mayonnaise. So a little bit of hummus, maybe a little bit of some really good um, 
uh, mustard and it would be great for that and then good goodness there's so much there's just so much variety in this way of eating um it, that's what makes it fun really and then uh there are some things you can put on crackers for snacks then desserts you have several desserts here in this book and uh, dairy free cheese products well anyway he lists some of them here in the book and that's it then after that we ha we are in chapter 11 which is recipes and next week we're going to talk a little bit about the elimination diet and maybe do a recipe or or having a guest and that's going to be the end of the cheese trap book club and i don't know if some of you arrived late uh, today but if you did i want to just show you one more time the book that we're going to start reading the first saturday of january and it is own your health which you can get on amazon you can get the uh, let's see here you can get the kindle version you can get the paperback, you can get the audio version, and I think that you will enjoy it. It's not a long book. We can probably do this book in four to six weeks, um, but the amount of recipes that you will have here, you will truly have enough for the rest of your life. So um, Glenn is a wonderful man, a wonderful writer. He will be one of our guests, Chef AJ, uh, I'm pretty sure, will be one of our guests. And then one of the doctors that is featured in this book will also be one of our guests. And I want to mention one more time that I don't get any kind of commission from any of these books, uh, book sales. So um, I'm, we're just, uh, I just thought this would be a good one because it's new and um, it has a lot of recipes by AJ. And we can have the author as a guest and AJ and we can have another doctor as a guest and Glenn has been very gracious to um, give you all of you in this book club who purchased this book send him an email at gmercer at aol.com and he will uh, put Gustavo on the subject so that he will know that you're a member of the book club and he will send you a pdf file with 25 extra bonus uh, recipes he will send you an invaluable recipe for a carrot cake he will send you the video of chef aj making it and the pdf and you will think that you died and went to heaven when you tried this carrot cake and then he, he will enter you in a raffle and so i thought that he didn't have to do any of that really uh, I thought that was very nice of him. And um, um, I don't know if there is another way to purchase this book. I think that you can go to the website. The, um, if you go to Google, let's say, and you type the name of the book, Own Your Health, it should show you the website of the book, which has also other resources. And I think you might, you probably can purchase it from there. If for some reason you prefer uh, it or it's not there, I haven't visited the website yet. Um, then try to do it from the website directly. And if not, send me an email and I will make sure that that uh, somehow you get the, the book, okay? So it's one way or another, you, you will get it. Um, and um, when this video goes out to you within 24 hours, you know, you always get an email with a replay. In that email, you will have all of this information written down. And um, <clears throat> the email address for Glenn is G M E R Z E R. That's the last name at A O L dot com. Once you get your book, if you send him an email to that address and on the subject line, you put my name so that he knows that 
is for the book club. He will send you all those that bonus material that I mentioned. Don't forget because you want to have that really. Um, we may be even, I think we're going to make that carrot cake. That alone, I'm just excited, excited for that. I'm going to make, I haven't made it. I've seen AJ make it and um, it looks absolutely amazing. So that's all that I have to tell you other than um, I hope that you all have a really good weekend and to be careful. I am sick and tired of hearing about COVID. I want to need to be over, but you know, I started this book club when the pandemic started as a way to keep me sane and not go crazy and have something uh, positive to focus on. And it has helped all during this month. You know, we, we started this, I think in March or early April. And here we are at the end of the year. And it has been, uh, it has been good to be here with you all. I really appreciate you joining every Saturday. Well, I will uh, see you next Saturday for our last book club. Then we'll have a two week vacation. And um, maybe next Saturday also, I will have a surprise performance for you I think you're going to love it. I hope I can pull it together, pull it off, because this is going to be a busy, busy week, but I think I will be able to do that. And um, we will keep positive. Okay. So, again, have a good, a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.